VIP Access. VIP Access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. I'm super excited and I'm so happy because I'm having an international guest on the show this week. She hails from Nairobi, Kenya. She's a buddy. She's actually better than your average buddy. So it's such an honor to have such a badass chick, you know, doing her thing globally and in Kenya too. Madam DJ, music producer, visual artist, Coco M. Welcome to VIP Access. Thank <laughs> you. She made me blush. Oh, Can you see? I see, I see the blush. <laughs> Thank First you. of all, you're yeah. such a beauty. Thank you. I love to see a, a woman, female DJ, and she's a body. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm saying the same for you. First of Thank all, jewelry you. game on fleek. Uh, Hair Sante. game on fleek. I did it for Coco. You know, I was just like, Thank Coco you. is simple, but Coco has a vibe and a style. <laughs> so I'm glad you like... Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, a bit of a busy day, but I know. yeah, yeah, I need to come Busy, busy, busy life. <laughs> you could say that, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's, actually it's... so lucky that you're in Nairobi right now because you're always constantly touring. <laughs> Before we get into the touring, um, I just love you so much, and um, I think I got introduced to you via your debut music project, Kilumi, wow. which came out in 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just thought this was th it was so fresh. First of all, there was like a Luo song over there, <laughs> and I thought you are Luo. Then I came to realize you are not, and and that's what even made me so interested in you. Then I started mm -hmm. discovering you and decided um, discovering that Coco loves instruments traditional mm -hmm. sounds, mm -hmm. mashing different sounds, but especially African sounds. And I found that very interesting even for you to have a single with two Luo rappers. <laughs> that really <laughs> drew, drew me. And I was like, I need to hear more yeah. Luo rap in dance songs or Afro house or electronic beats. So yes. that was really cool. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, I think from then onwards, you've just been so kind. You know, we started communicating and never stopped. And then I started following your journey. And then I mm -hmm. saw you just leave and to internationally go to all these major stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's been so impressive. And I just wanted to say congratulations. Thank you. For f doing what you love to do, but mm -hmm. also being such a wonderful ambassador of Africa in Kenya, particularly. It's such a proud thing to <laughs> see you do you internationally. I mean, that's all we sp Kenyans speak about. When will Kenyans go global? That's when true. are Kenyans? <laughs> but here are Kenyans <laughs> going global. So let's... You know, yeah. take our time to celebrate them. And yeah. I take my time to celebrate you this week on this podcast. Thank you so, so, so much. I always joke. I, I feel like once we were done mixing that album, I was like, I need to learn Luo one time. Because there was that song. Then there was a song with Labdi called Pesa. Yes. I was like, Luo just sounds so good. Whether it's romantic yeah. or like And also she rapping. sang, I think it's yeah. like a, it's, it's like an old song. That, do do yeah, do, yes. do, do, do. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. And I she think played it's, the it's like a happy song and it's yeah. sang at many Luo functions. Yeah. I know I've had it in the shags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. It was such a like a, a joy to work with all the people that I collaborated with on that project. And um, when you mentioned my love for instruments, I'm particularly drawn to the drums and percussions. So every song I have must have somewhere a drum or like a shika, kayamba, something like this, because I feel like I, I resonate um, towards the rhythmic elements of a song mm. before anything else. And then I go to That's what you say. But like, yeah, I like That's to That's dope. Yeah. You're such a DJ because in that <laughs> way, you can also pick some of those elements you love and then yeah. see where to DJ them when you're having a live set, I mm -hmm. would assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's really dope. Them. Yeah, thank you. And, and the project did quite well, I must say, and mm. uh, continues to do well. Mm. Um, I particularly wanted to ask you about a, a song that you collaborated with like an older female, female vocalist from mm -hmm. the Kamba tribe. Yes. I think I, I read something you talked about how important that was for you yeah. if you could just relay that mm -hmm. coming together of that collab yeah so um finding this track happened during uh the pandemic and what's the track called the track is called it's it's labeled as kilamu mm. online and uh, yes is it not the title track it, it's okay. So the, the title is Kilume. Kilume. So it's like a little spin off of, ah, of um, what it was originally named. And um, I remember 
hearing these vocals. Um, so they came from uh, um, a series of field recordings um, that had been um, held inside the Smithsonian uh, Museum, Folkways, Folkways Museum. And I bought the album solely because of this one track. Mm. And I just couldn't stop listening to it. And up until then, I didn't even realize that some other people had sampled this particular mm. voice um, of Ndunge Wakalele. We're not sure whether she's alive. We're not sure you know, um, whether any of her family are still alive. Um, trying to get permissions to use this in my music actually took two years of me emailing the, the, the museum, um, trying to find out who owned the rights to this music, trying to get in touch with the person who recorded this music. Um, and finally, just before the album dropped, they finally con communicated with us and said that it was okay, they could give us like the permissions to use it. And I wanted to leave it the way it was, because first of all, it's just so beautiful. I'm very intrigued by soloists, worldwide, but like particularly women soloists. I don't mm. know what it is about the voice. I try to sing and I have to like warm up for 25 minutes and still it's just like not giving. Yeah. They can just like belt out just the most incredible notes, you know, off the bat. Just like you're dancing with people and then all of a sudden somebody just like you yeah. it, so just like it's yells powerful. out. Yeah. And that voice really, really struck me. And so it kind of was the driving force for the whole project as well. Nice. I was hoping to just gain access to anybody who was related to Ndunge or like to get gain more information around soloist culture in my own community. Yeah, which is Kamba and community. Yes, Kamba you community. You really do look like a Luo though. Yeah. We will take you. Yeah, <laughs> somebody walk up to me and speak in Kijalua. I was like, mm, what are you saying? Then I'm like, mm, because you live in Nairobi. Especially after that EP, they're like, yeah, yeah we had that song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am, I am by spirit. I'm, I'm a Luo. Yes. So it, um, it drove the project forward in that the power that... Dunge was bringing with just that voice, just mm. her voice alone, because there's no instruments in that particular recording. It's just her and somebody who is kind of giving ad libs in the back. Mm. And the song itself is is a lullaby. I was told it was a lullaby song. So um, Lula is like just yeah, hush hush, mm. my baby. And then in the back, the person giving the ad libs is screaming like a baby. So they're like, whoa, oh. whoa. So it was First of all, just very um, interesting, wow. very exciting to listen to, but also very uh, cool to learn more about. And I learned more about it when I played it for my mom, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. That's dope. Maybe That's like bringing back I've almost forgotten yeah. um, past yeah. and sound mm. and individual. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. doing do doing Yeah. yeah <laughs> doing the way to say it. Yes. So, mm. w from which year was she? Do we even know? I think it's it's from the 60s. Okay. I'm going to confirm this, but it says the recordings were obtained uh -huh. in the 60s. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. The field wow. recordings were obtained. Thank in you the for 60s. that. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah how, how has it been like, um, you know, just living life, you know, as a DJ, touring, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you're also a visual artist and are responsible for your visual sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how has it been doubling that between Nairobi and various cities around the world, especially mm -hmm. Europe? Yeah, I will say um, this being the second year that we are <laughs> learning how to, I'll say we are learning how to tour as we tour. <laughs> if Coco M is hey, learning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. I don't know what you all are doing. Because that's one of the reasons why I wanted you here. I was like, yeah. Coco needs to tell us, yes. tell Kenyan artists specifically, or yes. African artists, how you pay mm -hmm. into Europe. Because it's not easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You might not be where you want to be, but mm -hmm. you really have done well for yourself so far. I'm telling you. You. And, you. And I always say, like, when you see someone like have this train doing this, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's something works for them that you can learn from and exactly. it might work for you. You don't have to yeah. tour everywhere, but you know, you've had like over 40 shows in, 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 in a span of in two years. Span of two years yeah. That's not easy, Coco. Like yeah. there are people who <laughs> gig thrice a year, you know, yeah. because yeah. yeah, you know, it's like Nyashinsky gigs like three or four times a year, but also is a different kind of artist. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if someone was the artist who wants to gig many times, like yeah. Coco, it's still not easy. Like yeah, yeah, I would say it's it's um, the first tour is actually the most um, important one. 
Um, and it's actually the one you have to make the investment more on your own because paying for flights now is mandatory for a lot of artists outside of the Schengen area if you're looking to travel to, to Europe. Mm. They used to pay for flights back before COVID, but a lot of festivals suffered after COVID yes. and their budgets were slashed. So they give priority to people who are already in Europe. Mm. And so just paying for that flight to get out there is your first step. The second thing is to make sure you get at least three shows that are your anchor shows, right? So you try and get um, anybody you know who's running festivals. More often than not, they start booking six months out. So if you know you want to go in June, start talking to people now. Whoa. Start talking to people now, email them your mixes, email them your show, like say if it's a live show and you have a mm. recording, email it to them early in advance mm. and just keep pestering them until they tell you either no or you know fine let's check you out or let's find a slot for you because they're promoters they have many shows they need to fill those slots right of course so sometimes you do yourself a disservice if you just hold on to your staff or if nobody knows about you or right? if you don't even follow up and assume that they must get back to you exactly. maybe they're busy people to, are so you busy. know people are so busy so just like send polite reminders or just keep updating them on on your journey or anything new that you have mm. right so that should be able to secure you at least one show Mm -hmm. which you can now start to build a second and a third show around. Third is to be involved in community because then you know a friend who knows someone in Amsterdam who has a room or like who runs a small mm -hmm. club night even. And you can add that club night or pitch yourself to that club night and keep adding it now. Just stack those shows up, whether they're big or like super small, whether it's a birthday party or you're playing in the museum, no one even cares you're there, you're there in the corner, it's mm. fine, it's a show. Just start stacking them up. But the trick is to do it very early in advance, mm. if especially if you don't have an agent, because mm. at least the agents know the, um, the shows to hit up, okay. when to hit them up what the shows are looking for so they can tell you this is not a good fit for you, this is a good fit for you. Mm. When I was starting out, you just play everything, basically, whether it's, uh, yeah, bad, what, you just play. And then in that way, once you have your foot out, then you start to meet people or people start to come to your shows and check you out because mm. you don't know who is checking you out, honestly. I've played shows where it's like six people and from there, the programmer of a very big festival was actually accidentally just in the club, just looking at new talent. Mm. They love to do that. So it's always good to give your, your best at every show that you play, regardless of how many people turn up. Um, yeah, so that's one of the few tips. I think it's a it's a big process. Yeah, I'm just uh, it's summarizing. A, it's a whole process. I, li <laughs> I like that you you've been you you know you broke it down. You're just yeah. like it's not just an agent or just getting yourself mm -hmm. there, but it's yeah. it's a whole process. You yes. know, you gotta keep stacking them up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just gotta keep giving the best show because you don't know who's watching. Exactly. I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's a lot um, for me. Even I've learned so much. I mean, if someone <laughs> comes to me, I'll, be like, I'll just go listen to Coco <laughs> <laughs> on my podcast. What have been some of your favorite shows? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, my favorite shows. And why? And why? Um, I would say playing... Mm, I played Fabric London mm -hmm. and it was curated by Desiree, who's from SA, wow. right? So power moves, first of all. Uh, and uh, they curated myself um, and Floyd Levine um, for this night. And I was opening the room, actually. And I remember just being like, ah, you get by the time this room is full, it will be two hours in. And literally, I started playing, and 20 minutes in that room was full. Wow. And I was just like, yeah, this is wild. Let's go. Let's just go where we're going. And it was such a, it was such a nice night. Floyd and Desiree are such amazing people to be around and to play with. So it, it felt very nice and cozy. And um, also just the fact that there was not so much pressure to perform, per se. Mm. I would say 
opening sets are still some of my favorite sets because it allows me to get into my groove. Mm. When I'm thrown like midnight, it's like, all right, now you have to hold on to yeah. this gig. Like make sure people don't go. So you just come in with so much um, pressure and of expectation. Course. So I feel like that was part of the reason why I really enjoyed myself. So you can start anywhere. You can start even with the national anthem. It's fine. Mm. But wherever you end up, you warm the space up for the next act and the next act. So... That was one of my favorites. And then um, playing with um, Labdi and Bunt in Norway for Club Unganisha. Um, uh, I went, um, actually, because I travel. Uh, I don't know if I've uh, mentioned this, but part of the reason why these tours are very successful is because I travel with um, the most amazing tour manager, <laughs> Justin Doucette. Uh, who's also my partner, That's so it dope. really helps to just move around with somebody. That's dope. Um, who's when also you close super your eyes, someone can, can, can hold your hand <laughs> when you're close, <laughs> you're getting to the trap. And I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, we um, are there for one another. I feel like also just knowing how to network with people, knowing how to talk to people, because mm. I'm a very somewhat reserved person mm. i'm an introvert extrovert where when i'm playing i'm out there when we're done it's like this, yeah this so it's important to have somebody you know by your yeah. side they might not be your agent or tour manager it could be yeah. your partner who happens to be your tour manager because it's yeah. tour management yeah. essentially exactly um and if it's somebody in the industry even better because mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they understand mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's dope yeah that's a power team <laughs> thank you <laughs> my, my beyonce and jay <laughs> Obviously, you're the Beyonce. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, oh, but well, Jay-Z is the, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I wanted mm -hmm. to say some of my favorite shows of Coco, and I haven't seen so many, is like Boiler Room and yeah. most recently mm -hmm. the Spotify Colors event in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I saw how you had your own energy and it was changing and you were going with the crowd. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I enjoy being out at concerts and festivals sometimes to also see the mood of the people, to mm -hmm. see the people enjoying themselves, to see if they're paying attention. And I remember, you know, you played some hip hop, you played some like electronic music. Then there was like even some R and B. There was like even Craig <laughs> David. The assignment. And I'm like, and what? Do I'm do like, she's so bold. I'm like, <laughs> to me, talk her hip hop. <laughs> To kind of R&B, Craig David, you know, homework. and you're just there confident. And then everybody was vibing with you. <laughs> I just found that so amazing. Like you, you. carried us to places and it worked, you know, mm, because there's mm. this traditional um, um, idea that mm. a DJ must play what the people want. Mm. And what the people want is... <laughs> to dance to one genre or I don't know. Yeah. And that's what you have to give them the whole night. So it's just mm. a breath of fresh air to experience a DJ like you are because you really are one of one. Mm. And I really, really enjoy you and your music. And um, keep up. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. I saw you in the crowd. Yeah, in and you big, you were bigging me up on, <laughs> on the DM. She's like, oh, I saw you at my show. Like, yes, Coco saw me. Yes. <laughs> I literally came to see you and Blinky. Oh, and um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah, so I, I feel like you're only starting to play more and more in Kenya or mm. are you playing a lot in Kenya and around the continent and we don't know? Not really. Okay. You're right. Yeah. I used to play quite a bit before COVID. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had a residency in Alchemy. Dope. I was playing at Backyard. Muse sometimes mm. would book me. Um, but um, after COVID, like, I, yeah, the shows just got less and less. But also, I feel like, yeah, my fee kind of, you know, jumped up of a course, little bit. Of course. I was playing, yeah, most nights for free and it was just not working out anymore. Um, it needs to make sense, especially yeah, when it's yeah. that tasking. You know, night oh, nightlife yeah. is mm. fun, but mm. to to an extent, you do mm -hmm. you could get tired, mm -hmm. or you mm -hmm. will get tired if mm -hmm. you're playing the whole night and not sleeping. Exactly, so. yeah, and it takes quite a bit of prep before. So there's the back, the 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 element that people don't see the prepping for the event, just um, even getting there. Um, setting yourself up as a woman, sometimes I used to play alone, and you know, just you have the most in incredible, incredible characters in a space, and you have to deal with all of this stuff. 
that nightlife comes mm. with. It just has to make sense. It has to be safe for you. It has to at least be able to sustain you. Otherwise, I would have been back just juggling all my other, like, you know, I had a job. I was working at Nation Media. Then after, you know, you clock out, you run out to the club. It's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was becoming a bit... The uh, hassle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love it. I love it. Mm. We are all hustling in one way or another. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and one, one, one challenge, you know, leads you to a, a different opportunity. Like yeah. now touring globally, mm. um, maybe that's not what you set out for, or maybe it's mm. what you set out for, but I love mm. it for you. Thank you. And I think it is even making a lot of Kenyans and Africans, you know, look at Coco and be mm. like, oh, we need to have Coco. Mm. You know, she was all over and she's in Nairobi. And I love that. Yeah. I, I wonder why that sometime how um, a lot of people blow up in, in the African market and Kenya particularly. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm just like, whatever, man, as long as <laughs> you still book her and as long as she's still successful, yeah. um, we're all happy at the end. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So you talked about, wait, before I let you go, because nope, you need nope. to go to class, you talked about... <laughs> Being a journalist, and that's yeah. the thing we didn't talk about. Like mm. your previous life was actually as a as a photographer and a videographer. Yeah, how mm. was that? And and do you miss it? Do you still want to do it, or no time? Yeah, I um I miss the thrill of the job uh, that I had at Nation, but anytime I go near them, I'm like, hey, this is where I lived. Hey, this is too. This is rough. <laughs> yeah, because I was covering a lot of politics. Oh, really? And you know, everyday happenings like, oh, you know, something happened here. Somebody hit someone here. So you just get it. an assignment from your Crime, editor. Exactly. You never really know what's mm -hmm. going to happen. So that adds to the thrill. And honestly, you can do it at a certain age in your life. And then after that, it's just mate. So yeah. it's, it's quite tough. But I had uh, an amazing <laughs> team <laughs> that I was working with. Of course, we had our challenges, but it was such great experience. Mm. It helped me learn about Kenya more. I honestly was one of those people who never even went to, like, you, you can't even walk down the road to the kiosk. Mm. Now you're just thrown to the deep end and you understand the different dynamics that make up Kenyans and um, just all of the issues we have, all of the beauty we have. And uh, you have this job of, like, bringing out stories in a very honest way. So it was a very big and honorable task for me to oh, have at the that's time. So nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really appreciate that time. Um, and then I was simultaneously training to be a DOP um, with Jinja Ink Films um, and One Fine Day Productions. And I'm very fortunate uh, to be able to take on one or two jobs. I've actually um, been working with um, this amazing um, couple, Chris and Maya. Um, oh, and I love shot them. Last year. I love them. So I love them amazing. so much. We did PR for their film, The Letter. Yeah, they are so amazing. They are. They have two they very are. amazing projects coming out and yeah currently yeah they've been working post. on something for book bank yes that's the that's project. one yeah that's one of okay the ones. Yeah. maybe mm. maybe when it's out yeah. maybe we will talk again yeah. you'll come back to the podcast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I bit, they did a bit of shooting with them that's that. dope yeah that's mm. dope mm. so mm. coco videographer <laughs> dop coming back Mm, like she never I'm left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Coco, yeah. thank mm -hmm. you so much. And um, I was telling you that I just love how you you you've been able to, you know, do you at an international um, level platform despite mm -hmm. all the challenges. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's not been easy, but yeah. you make it look easy. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for opening doors for women, especially. We don't have so many female DJs, but yeah. once we have Coco M, you know, you're a light and a lot of women and young girls look at you and want to be like Coco and see this it's possible. Mm -hmm. But you've also opened the, 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 the you know, op opportunity and space and possibility also to male Mm. So I mm. thank you for that and um, I wish you all the best you. as you continue to tour the world and make films and teach <laughs> and say hi to Santuri East Africa team. Yes, yes. You all are doing amazing now. things. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank Anything you, you want to say or mm. message you want to tell to Coco M fan? To, oh, to the fans. Yes. yes. And to you. Thank you so much, Aniko, for having me. I've been seeing your work and I've actually always wanted to work with you, but I was like, Nita Tosha Bay, Kweli. Tosha, international show. 
Sasa na meza sasa. No but pressure. Yo, no, no, you're doing such amazing work Asante. for African creatives all over. It was such a pleasure to have you on Pass Pass as well. We didn't even talk that about energy. Pass Pass. Ah, next, time. next time. I mean, just follow Coco. If you follow yeah. Coco on social mm. media, you'll get to know who Coco is about and the things she speaks out against, especially um, artists having trouble getting visas. <laughs> that is something Coco is very vocal about and uh, it really sucks when you 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 know are bad from traveling or missed shows because of visas so imagine? that's one thing yeah. i think africans and creators especially we need to keep advocating for yeah it just doesn't make sense and exactly. sometimes even to certain african countries let alone mm -hmm. european countries mm -hmm. so yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. and currently yeah. as we speak actually you've just reminded me i'm supposed to be on a plane to reunion island <gasps> right now 12 40 i don't know what time it is yeah it's gone it's gone. That's how my show has gone. And I've known about this show for what, six months? Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to get a visa from the French embassy eh? for a month and a half. Uh, apparently, they are fully booked. But eh, it's okay. Okay. It's all right. That really, right. really, yeah. really pains yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like um, just not only for artists, just like pushing for freer movement for all of us all over the place. Like, honestly, it shouldn't be that hard. Black fast. Surely. Yes. Black fast. Black fast. Mm. Black fast. Yeah. Anyways. Sawa thank Coco. you, Aniko. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love you, you so you, much. You, and you. thank you, everybody who's been um, listening and watching um, VIP Access this week. Our special guest is Coco M from Nairobi, Kenya catch her touring or performing or taking over uh, worldwide stages in whatever city you are. Follow Coco M on social media and please go and stream her debut album Kilumi very soon. She'll come to you with maybe a movie or another album, right? Another album. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank thank you, you so thank much. You, thank you. And thanks for the earrings. Gosh. You want them? Please. You do? <gasps> VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.